As you're no doubt aware, a lot happens on Capitol Hill as Congress works on a variety of different issues. We sent Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Kate Maher to the Hill to talk with those directly involved in the decision-making process. Thanks, Kevin. It's an honor to welcome to the show for the first time Senator John Bozeman from the state of Arkansas. Senator, thanks for joining us. As a member, as the ranking member of the Senate Committee for Agriculture, Nutrition, and Forestry, you guys have quite the workload. What are some of the topics that you do and work on in the committee that could impact cattle producers? Well, I think the major thing that we're starting to talk about now is the new farm bill. And so there'll be all kinds of things in there. The most important thing what we're starting to do now is get input from the stakeholders. And traditionally, farm bills are not Republican and Democrat. They're region of the countries. South's a little different. They irrigate. Great Plains are different. The eyes, Iowa, Indiana, California is very different. They've got unique, they export a lot. And then you've got the different commodities. And livestock is certainly very, very important. And, and uh, one of our leading sectors, we've got a bunch of it in Arkansas. I used to have a bunch of cows. I'm probably the only congressperson. I know I'm the only congressman uh, or congressperson that has an AI certificate. So I understand a lot about this. Uh, not many of those on display here in Washington, D.C., for no. sure. Uh, you know, I it's. Need to hang it, I need to hang it on the wall someplace around here so y'all can. That, that would be fantastic. Um, you know, it's hard. You mentioned the Farm Bill. It's hard to believe, but here we are, 2023 Farm Bill coming up. Um, not only is there probably not many other people here in the district with an AI certificate, but, but not a lot of people that are involved in Farm Bill discussions don't have an agricultural background. Why is your committee so important in the process then to sort of bring some of that common sense and bring agriculture to the Farm Bill? You know, it's really important. It's not only important uh, just in Congress in general. Sometimes it's actually very important for the committee because you have to remember that the committee has about about 20 percent of it has to do with agriculture. The other 80 percent is is really food stamps, nutrition programs, things like that. So many of the people that are on the committee are on there for that reason, really don't care much about production agriculture. So we have to we have to do a good job of educating Congress and then also educate those members as to how important agriculture is. It's very important and a, and a complicated process. A congressman from Ohio once said, you have to grow it before you can give it away. So thanks for all your work on that. You mentioned exports a moment ago. Um, port backlogs and supply chain issues have caused, of course, like everybody else, the cattle industry, some headaches. What's being done to find some solutions to those issues? Well, I think one of the most important things, Dusty Johnson has a bill in the House and then uh, Senator Thune has a bill in the Senate. And so I actually got on the Senate bill. Uh, we hope to get that passed, get it into conference. Uh, what that does is give different entities more authority so that we can get rid of the backlog. That's always been a little bit of a problem on the West Coast. We're seeing it now on the East Coast also, uh, New Orleans also. So it is huge. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of... Uh, uh, agricultural products sitting around uh, and part of the reason is is that they're 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 really the shippers are looking at things that are high value and so they're they don't really care about the lower value stuff only it's so important you know people have to eat but uh, we're trying to level the playing field and make a difference and that's, that's fantastic to hear because um, the U.S. beef production is, certainly plays a part in, in a food secure uh, world for, for our global, yeah, global, does. global partners. And with Ukraine, the, way, the situation that we have there, both with Russia and Ukraine, with those countries essentially, you know, not producing what they normally produce and they produce a lot of food, it makes it that much more important. So not only for us to supply the food that we need in our country, but as you say, to get it out to the rest of the world. Uh, we are the breadbasket, and uh, nobody does a better job environmentally or from a safety factor or from a, a price, price point. You mentioned being a sustainable food source, and of course, environmental regulations have a big impact on production agriculture here, especially for far beef farmers and ranchers. Uh, the Biden administration is looking to, to change up the waters of the U.S. rule. How can, how can we help? What can be done to make sure that that WOTUS rule um, doesn't have huge impacts to agriculture and farmers and ranchers and that, that we come out of it with some certainty um, and that we don't have to worry about just permitting every, everything, every little piece of water on our, our properties? 
Well, if the past is any indication of the future, it's going to make a huge difference. I think 97%, something, some humongous amount was uh, waters of the U.S. in Arkansas and, and true throughout the country. This is all about the federal government trying to determine what you do with your property. And so it is huge. My message to agriculture right now is that we have to stick together. And we did such a good job of this. Uh, stepped up basis was a good example of that. They were talking about uh, when they were trying to pass Build Back Broke, and uh, you know, the, one of the major pay fors was eliminating stepped up basis, which would have devastated uh, the family farm and small business. So the agriculture community stood firm, and as a result, we got it kicked out. This is what we've got to do with these crippling uh, regulations. The other thing is it's clearly unconstitutional. So I think we'll have a good chance of getting it kicked out in the court. The thing that really puts a, just throws a, a wet blanket on the economy, though, is uncertainty. And when you've got these rules hanging out, it makes it difficult for you to plan what you're going to do. And as a result, it just kind of clamps everything down. Thank you for having me. And thanks for all that you do. Uh, nobody's more respected than you all in the industry. And as I said earlier, we have to stick together. Organizations like yourself make such a big difference. And the fact that you're here in Washington, also, uh, again, thank you. And uh, uh, I, we've got a lot of challenges going forward, but uh, working together, I think we've got a lot of opportunities too. Well, again, thank you. NCBA looks forward to working with you moving forward and protecting our, our nation's beef supply. Thanks again. Thank you.